How's it going, my peeps? It is now time for the raw results slash highlights and review video. So I'll go over the raw results, some of the highlights in my opinion, and give you guys my thoughts, my review on the show. So it kicks off with Evolution coming out. They come down the ring, and Triple H talks about how, you know, the people think it's over, uh, they think it's over, that the Shield won, but he says the Shield didn't win, and he doesn't lose. And this is not over, it's not over until the Shield is over, until the Shield is done. And that happens tonight. So then Batista grabs the microphone off of Triple H and says, you know, he doesn't want to fight the Shield again. You know, he's been there, done that, and he's over the Shield. He wants what he came here for, and that's a one-on-one -on -one title match. And then Triple H says, even if you wanted to give Batista a title match, he can't because, you know, uh, Daniel Bryan is injured, so he can't compete. And then Triple H tells Batista and Randy that once they take care of the shield and the shield is no more, then they can get what they want, everything they've been promised. But until then, nobody's getting anything. So then B Batista grabs a microphone and says, I understand, uh, and I quit. And then the, he drops the microphone and Triple H is all shocked and so, so is Randy. And then he does like a goodbye motion. And then he leaves the ring and just leaves, goes to the back. And Triple H is raging in the ring. And that's it for the opening segment. And then for the first match of the night, it was a tag team match. Cesaro and Barrett versus Sheamus and Rob Van Dam. And when Cesaro made his entrance, and he did the same thing on, on Payback. I guess this is a staple now or something he's going to do from now on. Is when he's walking, he's got his chest puffed out. And it, it just looks pretty funny. So, anyways, yeah, Barrett, Sheamus, I mean, Barrett, Cesaro versus Sheamus and RVD. They ended up having a pretty good match. In the end, Sheamus and Barrett were the two legal men of their, you know, their respective teams. And Cesaro got in, uh, and then Sheamus took him out, and they was preparing to do the bro kick. He was preparing to hit the bro kick. Uh, at first, it looked like he was going to do it on Barrett, but then he points to Cesaro, and he's preparing to do it to Cesaro, and Paul Heyman's on the outside yelling at Cesaro, don't turn around, don't turn around. So then he gets up, he turns around, but he sees Sheamus coming with a bro kick, so right away he slides under the ring, and he goes ahead and like hugs Heyman uh, on the outside, and then Barrett hits the... Uh, damn, the winds of change on Sheamus. Sheamus kicks out, and then after that... Cesaro just leaves. He's, he starts to leave, head up the ramp, and then Barrett just looks at him like, you know, you're, you're leaving, and then once he turns around, he tries to go for Wasteland on Sheamus. Sheamus gets out of it. He then takes Barrett down and tags in Rob Van Dam. Rob Van Dam gets in, and this, this entire time now, Sheamus is like in the corner, not on the apron, but in the corner inside the ring when he tags in RVD. RVD comes in, Barrett tries to kick him, RVD grabs his leg, spins him around, but then gets out of the way, so Sheamus bro kicks Barrett, and then he follows that up with a 5-star frog splash, covers Barrett, and RVD and Sheamus win the match. And then following that, David Sandow came out as another character, somebody else, came out as Lance Stevenson from the Indiana Pacers, and basically, to sum it up, he made fun of the team, he made fun of the crowd, the hometown crowd, he said that LeBron James is the best basketball player ever, and that got booed. And then eventually he starts, you know, dribbling with the ball, preparing to shoot because there's a basketball hoop in the ring. And then Big Show comes out, and Jimmy Sanzel challenges him to a basketball, uh, to, to play basketball. See who's best. And then Big Show grabs the ball and just throws it in Jimmy Sanzel's gut, and then he hits him with the KO punch, knockout punch. And uh, his music hits, and that's it for that. And following that, it was Kofi Kingston versus Bo Dallas. They showed pictures of what happened uh, on Payback, where Kane came out, and you know Bo Dallas just left, and Kane took out Kofi Kingston. So yeah, Bo Dallas versus Kofi before the match. Bo Dallas uh, makes fun of the Pacers, kind of saying that the only you know the reason why the opposing team won was because they all believed, uh, especially Le uh, LeBron James. And then as far as the match goes, in the end, Kofi's, uh, I think he was going for a monkey flip in the corner, and Bo just grabbed him and then threw him on the ropes, so Kofi falls on the top rope, and then Bo Dallas follows that up with his mo his finishing move, the Bulldog, or I think it's called the Bulldog, actually, I'm not sure, I think, I, I think it is. 
So yeah, Bo Dallas wins, and then afterwards, Renee Young is trying to get an interview with Triple H. She's outside his office, uh, but instead, Stephanie comes out and says that Triple H is busy, uh, but she's going out there to the ring to make an announcement on the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. So once Stephanie is in the ring, it's a pretty long segment because also John Cena interrupts. But to sum it up, when Stephanie McMahon, you know, her announcement is actually that at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, if Daniel Bryan can compete, then he's going to compete against Kane in a stretcher match. If he can compete, then the Money in the Bank ladder match will be for the vacant WWE World Heavyweight Championship. So then after that, Cena comes in and he interrupts. Basically, he questions, you know, Stephanie McMahon's decisions, says that, you know, as an authority figure, she sucks. He rates her, you know, 1 to 10, 1 out of 10, and he gives her a 0, saying that basically that means you suck. And, you know, he talks about how Daniel Bryan doesn't want to vacate the championship because, for one, he doesn't know if he's going to get another shot at the championship again if he if he surrenders it and not only that but he doesn't know if maybe you know they'll want to eliminate him from the WWE completely because Stephanie McMahon doesn't like him and he goes over how you know Daniel Bryan's not the only one that's been out of action you know due to surgery he brings he, he talks about how you know himself he's had four surgeries uh, that put him out of action uh, so did Stephanie's husband Triple H and then he says, and you too, you had surgery. And then Stephanie says, yeah, but that put me back into action. And what else was there? Um, oh, yeah. In the end, you know, uh, Stephanie McMahon says that she's going to give John Cena an opportunity tonight. And she's going to put him in a match against uh, the person that's going to challenge Brian for the championship if Brian is able to compete at Money in the Bank, and that is Kane. And then she tells Cena that payback's a bitch, but so is she. And then Kane comes out. They have the match. It's a pretty short match because Kane gets disqualified. When John Cena goes for the attitude adjustment, Kane gets out of it, elbows Cena, and then he puts Cena in the corner and starts hitting him with knees and punches. And referee's trying to separate him, but Kane just goes back and attacks Cena in the, in the corner until he hits the count of five. So DQ, Cena wins by disqualification. After the match, Kane tries to hit the tombstone on John Cena on the steel steps, but Cena gets out of it and then he pushes Kane onto the steel post and then grabs the steel steps and throws them onto Kane, just like he did to Bray Wyatt. But this time, the distance wasn't as far, so it wasn't as brutal of a, I guess, steel, steel steps throw. And then Cena leaves... Kane sits up and he rages, grabs the, grabs the seal steps and just throws them around. And that's it for that. And then backstage, Renee Young catches up to Randy. She asks him about what happened. Randy says things got heated, but Tisa took his ball and went home. And then he says he, he had a talk afterwards with Triple H. They're still on the same page. He's still the face of the WWE and he's being granted a match against Roman Reigns. Afterwards, it was Los Matadores versus Heath Slater and Drew McIntyre of 3MB. When 3MB come out, they talk about how last night, you know, people thought Hornswoggle got his head shaved, but with a little bit of uh, work, and they, they, they mentioned a hair product, I guess that grows hair back or something like that. I don't remember the name. Uh, that Hornswoggle has now hair. He's, he's back with hair. And then Hornswoggle comes out with an afro. It's like a wig afro. And... So yeah, uh, match starts, and towards the end of the match, Hornswoggle poses on the apron, and then El Torito comes up from behind, grabs the afro, takes it off, and we see Hornswoggle's head shaved, and then Hornswoggle, embarrassed, just leaves, runs away, that distracts Heath Slater, who gets rolled up by one of the Lost Matadores, and Lost Matadors win the match. And then Nikki Bella took on Oksana and Alicia Fox in a handicap match, and... Fox and Oksana win the match in a pretty short amount of time after Alicia Fox hits the scissors kick and picks up the win. After the match, Alicia Fox grabs Nikki Bella in like a side sidewalk slam position and just throws her out of the ring. And Oksana starts stomping on Nikki on the outside. Alicia Fox goes to, goes to the outside as well. They both keep on attacking Nikki. 
And then Alicia Fox just grabs Nikki and just throws her onto the barricade. And they keep assaulting her until the white, signal, the white signal goes off. And then we see a chair on the Titantron, but Bray Wyatt is not on the chair. Instead, we see Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. And they cut a promo pretty much on the Usos. Jack Swagger and then Seb Coulter are in the ring talking about how Adam Rose should be deported. And then Adam Rose comes out for a match against Swagger. Uh, he ends up winning the match with a move that looks like a, it's like a headlock, a jumping headlock driver. So kind of like Dean Ambrose's finisher, but a jumping version of it. And then Byron Saxton interviews the Usos about their match against Eric Rowan and Luke Harper. And, you know, what happened last night at, in the last man standing match. And they talk about their tag team match and how, you know, they're going to do what it takes to, you know, to win the match. How As many super kicks as it takes, as, mer as many Samoan drops as it takes. It was a pretty energe energetic promo by the Usos. And then came time for the tag team match uh, between the Usos and Eric Rowan and Luke Harper. And towards the end of the match, one of the Usos, I'm not sure if it was Jay or Jimmy, he went for the... Uh, the splash from the top turnbuckle on Luke Harper. Luke Harper got his knees up, though. And then Luke Harper goes for the discus clothesline. Uh, the Uso ducks and then hits a super kick, covers him. Luke Harper kicks out. And eventually, Luke Harper tags in Eric Rowan, who hits a sidewalk slam. Not sidewalk slam. Actually, just a side slam uh, on one of the Usos. A sit-out side slam covers him and gets the win. So the White family beat the Usos in a non-title tag team match. So after that, it was actually the first Money in the Bank qualifying match, Dolph Ziggler versus Del Rio. I was hoping for a Dolph Ziggler win here, and I was also thinking he was probably going to win, because uh, Del Rio hasn't been doing too well. But at the same time, Dolph also, I mean, he hasn't been winning too much either, but I think he's been doing it a, a tiny bit better maybe than Del Rio. Anyways, um, Dolph gets his, you know, his signature moves in, he hits the elbows, he hits the fame acer, even hits the, the face buster from the top turnbuckle, and I actually thought he was going to get the pin there, because Del Rio kicked out at the very, very last second, but in the end, Del Rio makes Ziggler tap out to the cross arm breaker, and then we see Cody and Goldust talking backstage, and then Ryback and Curtis Axel take on Goldust, and a partner chosen by Cody, because they go over how Cody last night told Goldust, that he needs to find a better tag team partner, so he chose a partner for Goldust, and it ends up being Sin Cara. And it actually looked like, you know, they might win. Goldust and Sin Cara, you know, pick up the victory, or it looked like they were going to pick up the victory when Sin Cara went for the uh, Swanton, but Curtis Axel rolled out the way, and then he hit his finisher, the uh, Face Buster, or Hangman Neckbreaker, what's he called? I forget, I forget what it's called. Uh, but he basically hits his finisher on Sin Cara, covers him, and wins the match. And backstage, Cody was watching the match too. Afterwards, we had a celebration for Rusev for his victory over Big E last night. Uh, and he comes out with the Russian flag, and he's dressed in a suit. He gets awarded the medal. He's like standing on like a podium, and they sing the Russian national anthem. And uh, there's even like confetti and everything. But anyways, after that celebration is... The biggest part of Raw. Uh, it was supposed to be Randy versus Roman Reigns one on one. So, before you know, before the match, uh, the, actually the match doesn't even take place. But anyways, you have the Shield coming out, and uh, they talk about last night. Ambrose talks about how you know how are they looking, and how he talks about how they won. And Rain says, you know, the difference between the Shield and the sh I mean, the Shield and Evolution is that. Evolution is like this, and then he shows his hand, it's like an, it's just an open hand, and then he closes his fist, and he says the shield is like this, showing the closed fist. He says the shield are brothers, Evolution are brothers. And then Evolution's music hits, and we see Randy coming out with Triple H, it's just Randy and Triple H, and Triple H has a sledgehammer. So then Seth Rollins goes ahead and grabs two chairs and gets in the ring. And then, you know, Triple H is walking down the ramp with Randy. And Randy's in his ring gear, so, you know, he looks ready to compete. And then Triple H says that he always has a plan B. He says, last night was plan A, but tonight... And then he, like, looks at the sledgehammer. He's like, tonight is plan B. 
and then it's quiet for a moment there and the shield is like waiting and I'm also waiting I'm waiting for somebody's entrance music to hit for that new person for that person to be the newest member of evolution so I'm like waiting for uh lobster head too many limes or something like that but instead we get the biggest shocker yet, the biggest surprise yet, it's Saffron, Saffron's freaking hits Roman Reigns in the back with the sealed chair, and then I'm shocked, and also Am you, you see Ambrose, he's also shocked, and then Rollins also hits Ambrose with the sealed chair, and then he just goes on hitting them with a bunch of sealed chair shots to the back, both Ambrose and Reigns, while Randy and Triple H look on uh, from the ramp, and then once he's done, he goes to Randy and Triple H, you know, gets out of the ring, and he gives a sealed chair to Randy. Randy and Triple H head to the ring, so does Seth Rollins. Uh, Randy now starts using the chair. He hits Reigns with it, and then he places it on the mat, hits an RKO on Reigns onto the chair. And then something else I forgot to mention is Seth Rollins, before giving the chair to Randy, he actually hit his finisher as well, the blackout. Uh, which is, you know, the uh, running stomp on Ambrose onto the chair. So they, both Randy and Rollins hit their finishers on Reigns and Ambrose on chairs. And then after the RKO on the chair, they just stand there over the shield, Triple H, Seth Rollins, and Randy uh, next to each other, looking down on the shield as Raw ends and the crowd's chanting, you sold out. So, uh, damn, that was a big surprise. That was a big, big surprise. I was... Um, I didn't think the shield was going to break up, uh, especially not on tonight's Raw. On tonight's Raw, towards the end, I was just expecting a replacement for Batista when it comes to Evolution. And, I mean, looks like we got that, but I didn't expect the shield to also break up in the process. Like I was saying, I was expecting maybe Sheamus. Actually, maybe not Sheamus because he looked super face-like, <laughs> or he acted super face-like in his tag team match. With Rob Van Dam shaking his hand and smiling, all that. But I was thinking maybe somebody was going to replace Batista there uh, that wasn't a part of the Shield. So yeah, that was definitely a big surprise. Definitely the biggest surprise since Brock Lesnar broke the streak. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that is uh, definitely the highlight of the show. I, I didn't see it coming. Maybe I should should have saw it coming when Saffron's brought the Steel Chairs in the ring. But I, I completely, it, it, it caught me by surprise. Now what I'm left wondering is, what happens next with the Shield? See, we were, at first I was wondering what happens next with Evolution, who joins Evolution. Now I'm wondering what happens next with the Shield. Does somebody else join the Shield? Do they get a replacement for Seth Rollins? And then I'm like, you know, when that happened, I was thinking, oh, you know, Batista could come back as a face. And, you know, help uh, the shield against Evolution. But I believe, uh, you know, Batista's going to be out for a couple months now. Uh, so, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen there. I don't know if there's going to be a match between Evolution, or the new Evolution, and the shield. If so, is it going to be a handicap match? Or is somebody going to come in and help the shield? Now, I'm really curious to see what happens next week. And, um... You know, I was thinking maybe it was going to be somebody, if somebody was going to join Evolution, it was going to be, you know, a jack dude, like somebody to replace Batista, you know, to replace, since Batista was the muscle of the shield, I mean, the muscle of Evolution, I was thinking it was going to be another, you know, a big dude, but it looks like that is not the case. So now I'm also really looking forward to seeing Batista back, to see what he does. Uh, is he going to be a heel or a face? The thing is... Um, after he, after he quit, you know, uh, not, not, after, you know, not listening to Triple H and quitting, I don't think Batista's gonna come back as a heel. But anyways, guys, as far as a rating for tonight's show, I'd give it a 7.5 to 8 on 10, around that range. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, as always, can you click that like button down below, I'd really appreciate it. Also, expect a video from me tomorrow, and with that said, I'm out, see ya.